Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Sentinel story. I have an amazing guest today. I'm so happy. This is Miss Karina. Hello, Miss Karina. How are you? Oh, hello to everyone that's tuning in. And thank you, Miss Vester, for doing this for the families and for the kids and for the staff. Of course, of course. So um, what is your role at Spenaway Lake and how long have you been with us? Okay, so I'm a restorative coach. So it's kind of hard to like synthesize, but I'm going to try and it's not my nature, but um, I build relationships between student to student and student to teacher, uh, student to administration, like principals and vice principals. Um, I work with the parents, the family, um, or the, the caretakers, right? Mm -hmm. Caregivers um, and the school. So I am constantly finding those natural bridges and making them stronger. So if it's kind of like having an eye for what is the barrier, what is getting in the way, and then mm -hmm. how we gather people around that barrier so that we lift it together. So if it's like a past bad experience or mm -hmm. a negative discipline conversation or something like that, okay, that's the barrier. Now we recognize, now I get a team of people around me because I can't do it about myself. And then we lift it together. We break that. I love that. I love that. I know um, just with your short time um, at Spanaway Lake, you've done a lot of coaching, like you said, with staff and with students. And so I know some students are seeing in their Zooms, possibly people using hand signals, like restorative hand signals. Are, can you teach us some of those signals that they may recognize? Because I've done some interviews with some other staff over the past few weeks and I think I've done some of your hand signals with not even I didn't even think about it like it was just it was one of those things that I did and so I want um, students and families to recognize some of the signals that we use and what they mean okay and so we use signals uh to not interrupt the listening we want to listen to understand and sometimes if our brain is eager to respond to some somebody's talking and it's like, oh, I got a story that connects with this. And instead of pausing our story and hear someone for what their story is, allowing and creating that space. So signals helps us create that quiet space where we can focus our soul to engage with that person in front of us. So um, for example, somebody's like, I love to ride my bicycle. So it's like, August 27th was my birthday and I got a new bike. Everybody will celebrate for me. Yeah. And I would verbally say that as a teacher and as a facilitator to say, come on, bring, it, bring some love on board and celebrate with me. I got a bicycle. Um, snap is like, hey, we need to get together and work on social justice. This is the moment. This is the historical moment to interrupt systems of oppression. Snap to that. I know that Ms. Vester and me, we, we, uh, that's our value. That's something that we believe and we thrive for. And our students in Spanaway and our families, the same thing. Our teachers, our administration, we are linked together in this. So snap to that, right? Uh, pause. This is a beauty of equity and science that anyone, you can be five years old and I can get excited about what I'm teaching and what I'm sharing. And you can be five years old and you can pause me. And I'm going to visually recognize you. I'm going to call your name and I'm going to say, hey, Johnny, let's pause. He has something to share. Then we pause and Johnny shares if it's clarifying question, if it's something like that. Um, if it's something that's going to take distraction, right, we have a way of saying, okay, um, so-and-so gets to pause today and kind of help the family move forward in this conversation. And when we say family, we talk about tribes as people that have been brought together by life to work mm -hmm. together, do good for each other, right? right? To support each other. So pause is a beauty because anyone can pause. No one mm -hmm. is um, embarrassed to like come late to a meeting. You will pause and say, my sister Vester is here. Miss Vester is here. I'm going to pull a chair. I'm going to pause. Everybody's going to be very quiet and we're going to allow that human transition. So pause is yeah. a beautiful one. Me too, which is like surfing or like hanging loose, but it's like you and me. Yes, uh, we have a strong tie to family. We value mm -hmm. family. We value family time. And we have a way of extending family that's not only blood related, but our heart mm -hmm. adopts family as we move through this universe, which is a beautiful connection. Snap to that. So when you say something that's like, man, I didn't know how school was going to go online. I was a little bit stressed. 
Me too. <laughs> Today, do, day two, right? I'm like, I we got this. This is a lot of beautiful things happening. Me too. I'm celebrating. Um, virtual hugs is very beautiful because we can squeeze ourselves and our brain gets like happy dopamine and it's like uh, it breaks the distance that we have. It doesn't matter if I am um, doing a training and I'm in Argentina and you're in Tacoma, that virtual hug unites us in the, in the cause, right? And like, Love that one. one. That's my favorite. Uh, and those are like kind of like the five initial ones. There's a lot more. Oh, Kleena is like, we're having a conversation. Somebody's having a lemon attitude and it's like bitterness is coming out to the surface. So that's not constructive, right? Uh, we're going to clean it. We're going to pause and clean it. But we only clean when we have a relationship. Like you and me, we have a tight relationship. Mm -hmm. And we have a good relationship with our students. We can be like, clean it. You know, it's kind of like snap. Snap out of that. You know, hashtag check yourself before you wreck yourself. Got it. I love that. I So um, I have taught my son, he's almost four, to pause when he gets overwhelmed. I say, go, you can go like this. And he actually is starting to say, I need a break, mama. And I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. Okay. I and I, I give him space. Yeah. My heart, my hand is in my heart. When I feel for you, you say something to me, like I'm going through the struggle. I don't know the pain of your struggle. That's your pain, right? I can't mm -hmm. act like, oh, I know exactly what it feels to, to lose your grandma right now. I know exactly. I know what it feels to lose my grandma, right? But so my hand is in my heart for you. I am with you. I'm a sister in this. I'm a brother to you. I'm a family to you. I'm here as a human being. So I don't want to forget that one. Yeah, that's an important one. I yeah. feel like we, we use that one a lot because um, online remote learning is, you know, a struggle. We have our ups and our downs. But number one, we're all in this together because, yeah. um, you know, students, families, staff, we're all kind of struggling. Um, and, and so sometimes yeah, this, this one is super we need important. this one. And I thought that this is something that the students created and it was beautiful that here we listen. That was like naturally was born out of the love of the Spanaway community where mm -hmm. it came out with like here, doesn't matter where we are, this is our here right now. <laughs> we listen and here we belong together and here we build and it's just beautiful it makes my heart cheerful it's so beautiful that was just born out of that need you know that love so what are you looking forward to this school year oh that's an exciting question that's like dynamite i am <laughs> looking, i am looking to interrupt the traditional way to serve students i am looking forward to um the freedom of virtual learning and the mutual respect of virtual learning. I am looking forward to increase the capacity, not only of teachers to provide a meaningful virtual moment together, but also how students can make that meaningful, right? How it goes back and forth as the ocean carries the water in and out and it changes mm -hmm. the landscape. That's how I see virtual learning is this like landscape that we're learning and nothing will be diff uh, the same after this year. This is right. a historical moment and you have to decide what way do you carry? Do you weigh a constructive way? Do you make beauty, beauty as you come in or you have destruction, right? And so we have, we have a choice to make as we interact. I, I love this year because it's so challenging and so beautiful at the same time. I have it great is. Hope. Yeah. I have great hope as well. I definitely. Yeah. Yes. Me too. Um, yeah. Yes. I have a um, some questions. I always ask um, people that I interview just a number of questions. So, you know, students, families that I've listened to other interviews, they may hear similar questions, but each person that I interview as staff, we're so different. Even though we work in the same building, we just have a different history. Um, our families look different. Like there's just so many different things, but we come together to like create something beautiful, which is community. And so I like to kind of ask similar questions just so that people can connect that there's different answers. Yes, that one question, but there can be so many different ways of responding to it. So 
Are you ready? Always. All right. Um, so, oh, you know what? The very important question that I forgot to ask you, where did you go to high school and what was your high school experiences like? Can you just think of a couple of experiences that you had in high school that you had some takeaways, um, some like really in-depth learnings that you've carried with you? Okay, so went to high school in Argentina and high school is a little bit different. You have to choose your path and what is ninth grade, right? You have to choose if you're going to go to like pre-medical and science or if you're going to go into law and writing and literature. So you make a choice and then you are in high school for five years. And because we have, we work with our family to provide as part of our tradition, our cultural tradition, we only go to school for four hours. And then we work in the afternoon with our family. If it means to take care of our grandmothers or like younger uh, siblings or helping in our church and our community, that's a normal expectation of especially middle class and lower class to take care of those in your community. The wealthy one, that they don't have to worry about that. And they end up going to school for eight hours because they go to like immersion school, like international mm -hmm. schools. And um, so it's a different experience. My experience was interesting. I was bullied from kindergarten. I have memories of being bullied for my look, uh, my nose, uh, my weight, if I had weight, if I didn't have weight, being a girl, girls can't do this. Um, so I was bullied every single day from kindergarten to high school. Um, so that's one experience. My brother had learning difficulties and I only have one baby brother and he was bullied to the point the people were very abusive and segregational because of learning in a different way, right? He needed a different learning um, opportunity and the school and the students were not able to provide that because we, we have limited funding. So that really impacts that. Um, and then I, there's something beautiful about my high school experience is that everything was connected with the purpose of liberation because we, um, Argentina back in that time we are coming out of military dictatorship and we are trying to fight for our democracy and no no country outside like the big powers are not coming to rescue us we're not waiting for anybody to liberate us we have to like self liberate by having a voice so my high school experience is about finding poetry and writing that's kind of like behind the lines for example, poems about a tomato who jumped out of a box in, in the vegetable store and he ran down the street trying to escape the knife of the salad maker as he wanted to be different than all the other tomatoes. Seeking for his freedom, he found the river and navigated away from the salad. Wow. Right? And so it's like that, see, that need for freedom because there is police brutality everywhere and they have the total authority. They don't like your hair. They, if you're gay, if you're Christian, if you're a different kind of Christian, um, if you didn't keep your yard one way, they come and they beat you up. The, wow. the solutions were all always violence. Uh, yeah. In my town, I was like 13, which is when we start high school. And one night the military decided that our history professors, our history teachers knew too much of history. So they came into my small town and they took all my history teachers and killed them. And the next day, because it's a small town, and we know our teachers, it's like no more history teachers. So when you grow up in that type of system, so here is two angles. Do you feel safe in your learning environment? Mm -hmm. Are people interrupting violence and bullying and making sure that you are safe, that you want to come to school and that you're safe? And number two, are people creating and designing instruction that makes you have a voice? And mm -hmm. under a dictatorship, it didn't matter the social situation and the idea that you can lose your life or your freedom, that was not a limitation. And so my high school, I found a lot of teachers that were like, okay, grab a piece of uh, wood and carve it to what you wanna be. We didn't have materials, we didn't have anything. And we were able right. to so carve like things. And creativity and the imagination and the way to just expand your mind, like really strengthening and expanding your mind to 
what possibilities yeah. are out there, what you can create. And everything was applicable. So when I came out of high school, I could run a business for my family, right? Because mm -hmm. my family needs to have food. Uh, my high school experience was very difficult and very rich at the same time because of the need for freedom and also because that social, what makes me who I am, that I will, I will stop any kind of bullying. You will not do that in front right. of me. We are going to work on that. It doesn't matter if you're like adult to adult, mom to mom, kid to kid, boyfriend to girlfriend. Like it will not happen. We, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gone. Pause it. Hold it back. Yeah. <laughs> that was good though. I was feeling that. I was feeling that. Um, so we'll, now we'll dive into the questions. I like, you know, I like to know the, the history, our high school history, like our histories mean something to us. Um, and as we talk to high school students and high school families, I, I like to get that information out there as to what our histories are. So um, tell me a little bit, how do you do best in school? Well, one thing interesting about my high school is that I created a persona for me. So I always got B's, never got A's. I was an expert in cheating because I have very good relationships with my teachers and things like that. But I was the kind of like this great stuff. I don't know what you're proving with the great. So it was a little bit of a challenge for me, but also I can see the difference with my brother. He needed way more support and instead of creating the support for him and for my parents navigating his learning challenges, right? Um, it was always this idea that's like, well, you're invisible. You got the grades and you're good in school and you know how to write and read and all this stuff. Um, so it was interesting. High school is interesting with grades and like also like, yeah. have you measure what I learned in my soul, like the power I have on the inside? So in high school, it was kind of like a nobody, right? right, um, right. And, and then when I went to university, like I went to university here in the United States, University of Washington. Um, and I was done being quiet and I was done being invisible. And I was like, and it's kind of like the first time that I recognized that I have let go of my name. I have let go of my voice. Um, so my studies here empower me to be like, I want more from life. So you, so what I hear you saying is as, as you moved into your post-secondary education, your college education, like using your voice, that made a more rich experience for you. Yeah, and connecting. Like I started volunteering when I was 13. I saw that the military didn't let the native tribes learn how to read and write and go to hospitals because they wanted to like eliminate them from the land. And because I look white in my country, they never thought that I was going to be tricky and go teach people who are prohibited from education. So at the age of 13, I have this like social conscious that um, I went into the woods and I will hide under the trees, look for the military and the police and be like, okay, this like the grandmas will get together with me and learn how to read and write and then take it back to their tribe. Right. And so it was a, a way of like using my voice with the only skill that I had. I knew how to read and write and mm -hmm. I have very little fear. So that was another skill to be like the difference between rebel and resistant. I was not rebelling to be disciplined by my parents. I was rebelling a system of oppression at the age of 13. Wow, very powerful. Um, when, uh, let's see, I accept I, others' differences by? Yeah, listening big time, listening, listening, okay. listening, trying to kind of like, if, even if it's not my experience, my experience doesn't measure everybody's life. Like I didn't grow up in that background, for example, having food all the time, having food security. I didn't grow up with that. Uh, it, it's, a, it's still into this day, this fear of not having food, even though I have a master's degree, you know, it's so my body remembers the trauma, right? Of growing mm -hmm. up like that. Um, so I think listening and also allowing myself to have great hope in humanity and have faith that there is a compass inside, like a sunflower that seeks the sun there's something inside that calls you to reconnect to the light and to find like, how do we make peace? How Palestinian and Israel can talk to each other? How people of color and white people on the other side very much can connect and make a beautiful community, right? 
Like, mm -hmm. so listening and providing the amount of time necessary to create a good, strong bridge, then when the river comes with strong waters, will not destroy. Right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Um, I am interested in, so what are a couple of your interests? I want to keep on learning. I love, I love education for the sake of like, it sparks my brain and it sparks my soul. And it gives me, um, more ways to apply. Like when I was back in high school, carving the wood to demonstrate my freedom, right? My need for freedom. I created an airplane. I have never flew in an airplane, but I wanted that freedom of like, no limits in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. And so to me, having more education and reading more books and listening to podcasts and finding people that like spark my soul and keep my spark going, that is my interest. I do things to like relax for a minute, which is like gardening and cooking. I have four kids at home. I have seven pets, seven humans, right? Those are the things that I do like on the side to kind of like be in a mindful moment and kind of like recenter myself. But the passion to find the skills so that no one um, shuts me down. The people don't say like, you don't have a voice. Your English is weird. You look weird. You're not from here. Like, who are you, Cookie, to come here to the party? So education is empowerment for me to say, you know what? I took the time to do that work so that right now I can set the table and you can choose to eat from all you can eat buffet. It's your choice. So... Um, when I am teased by others, I, well, you're a good friend of mine. So sometimes I just have to breathe, cry and find refuge, right? Find that place where my soul is taken care of in the building. It, you know, you're my refuge. You're my strong rock that I can go. In. We don't even have to talk. I can just kind of like breathe for a minute because the attack is very personal against me being born a woman, for example. Like there's nothing I can do to change m my gender. This is who I am. I'm a woman and I'm a mother and I'm an immigrant and I don't want to change who I am. I am, I am not from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it's like finding those friends, um, praying to release the idea that I have to control all situations, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to say my higher power, here we go. These are <laughs> you humans and I'm human too. And I'm going to release the need to control my situation. So allowing my physical need, which is to cry or to breathe or to eat food with someone that loves me, right? Mm -hmm. That I know that I'm being loved and not criticized. First thing, my physical needs. Second thing is like my spiritual needs to release that need to control. And then the third thing is kind of like, what skills do I have in my resource or in my friend's resource, mental resources, or spiritual resources? to give me the strength to move forward in that relationship so that that's a learning opportunity, not a conflict yeah. opportunity. Right. Um, I control my anger by... Okay, so here's a funny story, and I'm a restorative coach that is a behavior <laughs> interventionist. I know. I thought, see, that's why I thought <laughs> I'd ask. This is We're a funny story. Right now, so. I, don't know, I don't know if you know my past, but uh, <laughs> I was a fighter. I was a fighter, and aggression was my first... Um, so when they came to bully people, like my brother have a weight issue as a very young age, uh, apart from the learning challenges, right? So in elementary school, my number one thing, because the principals and the adults didn't interrupt the bully, and it was so continuous, right? That I would be like, I see you on that side, girlfriend. And I would be like, you know, um, wiping the ground with that girl because she attacked those who have no voice. She attacked those who are uh, younger, you know, people that not just her, but like different people will have an attitude of lynching on those who can defend themselves. So, um, and hallelujah, right? I have learned that violence is not the way, and violence was a pattern uh, in my country, right? In the history of our people, that I was like, I have a choice. And words go deeper than physical violence, right? I have a choice to train my soul to find a place of peace and restoration. So mm -hmm. restorative coaching is an intentional choice of divorcing violence and the past, my past in my country of violence, right? And moving forward, creating peace and opportunities for conversations 
and letting the moral compass, that sunshine, right, sunflower, find their own life and their own time to live freely and peacefully within the community that they're in at this point. Love that. Um, I am worthwhile because Okay, that's a hard one. That's so personal. And as a research coach, we always get to the personal. And it was, uh, I'm 47. I just turned 47. I'm 27. And it took me a long time to love myself and to accept mm -hmm. myself because the bullying was so severe, right? That the words were so strong. And so I had my mom and my dad saying, I love you. For every time that my parents say, I love you, there were a hundred times people saying, mm -hmm. you should kill yourself because you're so ugly. You don't deserve to be alive, you know? You don't deserve to come to the school, look at you. And so the portions of words are very important. And so when somebody's lying to you so many times, mentally abusing the way that you see yourself. So when I read that question, I was like, I had to take a step back and think about what has happened in 47 years mm -hmm. and how um, you have to make a choice to decide that you're worth it. You have to make a choice to say, yes, I am going to go to school, university, even if it requires for me to take a student loan, I am worth the investment. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody wants to give me a scholarship. I don't have the funding. I live in my car. Guess what? I am worth going there and getting the best degree so that I have a voice for other people. I'm in a better place right now about self perspective. Yeah. It, it takes people, you know, everybody's so different and it takes, uh, everybody has a different journey to reach that space. And it's a daily and, so, and it requires it, it people that, um, like, you're really great at this, you know, and saying like, dude, you're great, like you're doing good and, and then being very specific with your language and instead mm -hmm. of just being like, I love you, right? That's like so general, you're very specific and building me up. And there are people like our principal, right? She's my mentor. There are people that are very good at like building you up and it helps you every day to remember, hey, I did this process. I am still working. My life is still right. continuing. It's not one period and I'm done. It's, it's not like that. It's like, it's always growing and always changing. The one thing is interesting, adults look like they got it together and they're strong, but we're <laughs> all human beings and developing, right? Right, so, still growing, I'm, still learning. I'm 47, and sometimes I have a 14 year old moment. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. we all do. We all do. Um, you know, one thing that you just said that just resonates with me so much is that, you know, when we engage and interact with each other, um, I give you like a specific example of like what you did to contribute to the community that has been like worthwhile. And I think we, we don't do that enough. Like we just throw, like you said, statements out about you're great, but, but like, what do these things, what does it look like? Like, what does it look like? And what does it feel like for a recipient to feel it on the other end? So I like that. I, that thought of um, just the, the specific, very specific example. I think we need to do that more in our community in the school and our community, you know, out here in Spanaway and just overall yeah. in the country. I think um, there must just, be a multi narrative creates much yeah. more of a clear picture, right? And instead of just being my own narrative, my husband is a surfer and I think about I don't even get close to the water. I just go to the beach. So if I have to call 911, then I can do that, right? So he goes surfing. And he's riding the wave, so his focus is on the wave and staying on top of the wave and doing his mm. surfing stuff. And he's not aware that the dolphins are riding alongside him, right? Which from the beach, they could look like sharks. So when he gets back on the beach, I'm able to give him the other perspective of like, bro, you were riding with the dolphins. You know, there were like a whole school of dolphins riding with you. That was amazing. He's like, I was riding my wave and I was so focused. So I think when you speak to me, so directly, right? And same with Miss Romeo and Miss Eskew is so direct and different people in the building that they do that very specific build up statement. It's like, 
did you notice that you just escaped the sharks? Right. Did you notice <laughs> that yeah. the beach was polluted and you did not got sting? <laughs> Um, I help encourage others by? I think by being, by having the freedom to be myself uh, in the presence, in the natural, organic conversations of like, hey, can I walk, can I walk alongside with you? Can I be a, a human companion in this journey? It doesn't mean that I have more resources or that I know anything more than what you know. But instead of walking alone, I have walked alone in my life multiple times in my life. And it was very lonely, right? And so it's like, just to be present, just to be engaged, to be that person that's like, I can make a pause and then we can make a Zoom meeting happen. Mm -hmm. If we're in the building, I can walk you back to that class and we can do a check-in. If you're overwhelming class and you need to come out and have, I am thinking about how some plans for students to go water when we get back. So you want to go water plants with me, you know, just to, to be human and to breathe together. Mm -hmm. That's a beauty. Yes. One way I show caring, which you already alluded to that a little bit in your previous answer, but what are some other ways that you show caring? Well, here at home is easy because I cook, right? So like I have seven adults and it's like, you know, I will make things that are like, okay, I'm going to make cookies for everyone. It's like, and the, like, you know, 11 p.m., everybody's doing their studies to go to university themselves. And I will come out with, recycle what we have and make something do. And I think in school, the situation of like, let me do that for you. Let me help you out. Or let me be extra eyes in your classroom. Or if you have, the relationship doesn't have the right chemistry going between teacher and student, um, to be able to say, Let, let's navigate that together as a family. And instead of just being two people at, at a conflict, right? So I think that that's what, what, kind of like what I bring, the joy of like, don't carry it alone anymore. Let, let me carry for a little bit or let's carry together or let's drag yeah. that sucker. Uh, the person I most admire is? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. And it's so like, we'll oh, narrow I'm it down to three. Oh. Let, let, let's do let's do ancestral because I honor people who have passed right mm -hmm. and so I'm going to do my two grandmothers um, both of them lived in a very difficult uh, marriage very difficult situation for a woman to be free and for a woman to fully uh, present themselves to society with all their creativity and their voice mm -hmm. um, and both of my grandmothers chose to be free in a time that a woman could not do that and, um, and chose to interrupt abuse, chose to interrupt uh, somebody telling you that they're going to take care of you, but they didn't. They, they took life and faith and their children and they, they empowered the entire family to stand tall and to fight against this. And I think of the blood of my ancestors in my veins and being like, 2020, who's going to come and say, shut up, you know? It's like my grandmothers were in 1920 and 1940, brand new immigrants to my country with no rights to vote, no rights to speak, no rights to uh, hold the hand of a man trying to abuse them. And it's like, I get empowered by thinking of the narrative of my grandmothers. Mm -hmm. So. But there's a lot of people that are alive that they're impacting me every day, right? Right, but still, yeah. those, those blood, yeah, that's strong. That's yeah. strong. Yeah, my, one of my grandmothers, the military was coming. They were burning every Bible in town because there are a couple pages to talk about freedom. There's no, lave, we, no slaves. We're all equal. Men and women are equal. It's right in the Bible. So my grandmother went on the, under the chicken coop, made a hole, bury the Bible, they came and destroyed the whole house, but they never thought to look under the chicken coop, because, you know, but she was so creative. She found right. ways to lift the barrier, and right. good for her. Good for her. Um, I can be a positive role model by? Ay, ay, ay. Uh, by being, by, um, um, I can be a positive role model. I, I, was, I, will, I will start maybe in a little bit of a deficit mindset here. 
a bit like control myself and clean myself because sometimes I get really excited and it's like be aware of people around me and kind of like clean it. Not in the sense of like be professional and be like, you know how they do milk in this country? They boil and they take all the like the good so that it doesn't go bad on you. Like pasteurize. Pasteurize. Okay. Yeah. do all that process, right? I really like country milk. Um, but I think that sometimes I have to have a balance when I am in public environments and working between my passion and my desire for freedom and how do I do that uh, teaspoon at a time or tablespoon at a time or bucket at a time to recognize, yeah, to recognize who is ready to be like baptized in freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have any closing thoughts for us at all? You gave us some, some good, good stuff, Miss Karina. That's for sure. I have so much gratitude. Like my gratitude that you are in this home, right? Like Spanaway score. There are so many people that Spanaway is like, they should be like blessing, right? Like pray hallelujah because the intentionality of the soul. So that's my gratitude. This is not just a job. It's a calling, it's a mission, it's a dedication. It doesn't have an on off, even though we have our own blood uh, family that we need to take care, that we want to take care, not need to take care, we want to take care of them. We don't have like an on off in the love, passion for others. Um, It's not a nine to five, you know, it's not a, I'm working through my retirement. It's like, so that's my gratitude to have, to, equal souls and I could be in any country anywhere but I'm here and spent away with people with equal soul and that just gives me gratitude I um you're amazing your hugs are amazing number one that's something that we when I see you when I saw you last year before we were out and we could look at each other's faces and just know that we needed it right And it it was reciprocity. That's what I love about how we engage together. It's that reciprocity. And um, we model that for our community, our staff community, hopefully, and then our kids as well. It's like, you know, I take care of you, you take care of me. And so I just appreciate you always listening. I appreciate your hugs. I appreciate us sitting down and sharing a meal together, which I know you're always running around. We're always doing a thousand things. So to sit down and break bread together, um, it didn't happen often, but when it did, it was, um, it was such a powerful way to connect with you. And I just appreciate that time so much. And I look forward to us coming back into the building and Um, engaging in our community in a different way as we kind of connect through the internet right now. But I I agree with you. You said earlier that um, we're going to come back and things are going to look and feel different. And I think it's going to feel better for for everybody and kind of open us up to engage and communicate and take care of our community in a different way. I'd love to say the power of a hug, which I think the healing of a hug, right? and how it's not just for you and me or, you know, that we see students in the hallway and when someone needs to be like, I'm here for you, we are here for you. And uh, we have moms, they have come to meetings, right? And they needed that presence, that instant access to be like, I have never experienced school like I just did here in Spanaway. I have never been treated like a full human being who is experiencing emotions as people are talking about your child. Um, so I think the, the, the healing of a hug should be our next book. <laughs> oh, yes. Wait, we have to do a little research to see if the book's already out there. It may be. We can uh, stay it. tuned, we can folks. Hugs healing. <laughs> well, thank you again for your time. Um, and I look forward to seeing you soon. You know where I am. You can always yeah. reach hug. out. I'm always a text message away, Miss Karina. Thank you for being there. All right. Have a good one.